The once popular Outback Steakhouse has found themselves in a bit of a dismal state. Restaurants are closing, customers aren't walking in the door, and things look dire. Why? It might not be for the reasons you think. Bloomin' Heart Attack the Bloomin' Onion is Outback's signature dish, such a staple that anyone who even hears mention of the chain thinks of this plate of deep-fried goodness first. And that's a problem, especially at a time when people are increasingly more conscious of the food they're eating and the calories they're consuming. Even the regular Bloomin' Onion isn't for the faint of heart, clocking in at a whopping 1,959 calories. It gets worse. 1,450 of those are from fat. And if you use that dipping sauce, you're looking at a dish with more than 170 grams of fat. As if that's not bad enough, Outback hasn't made it healthier, and they've introduced less healthy versions at various times of the year. For March Madness 2017, they offered up the three-point bloomin' onion, which was covered in fries, cheese, bacon, and meat cubes. All that added up to 3,080 calories, and that's not how most people are looking to start a casual dinner out. They've been outed. When Outback opened in 1988, it was acceptable to label Bloomin' Onions, Well Done Steaks, and Foster's Beer as the highlight of Australian cuisine. In the 21st century, though, it's an idea that hasn't aged well, because there's absolutely nothing Australian about most of Outback's offerings. LA Weekly called the Bloomin' Onion a triumph of Americana, and it's true. After all, Outback's founders were inspired by Crocodile Dundee when it came to their theme, not actual, real Australia. That's sort of like an American restaurant being inspired by this. Warm apple pie. Australian-born, James Beard award-winning writer Besha Rodell said it best, wanting to clear some things up after eating at Outback. Four shrimp on the barbie, mate. Not actually a thing in Australia. Nope, that's not authentic either. And that's just the start. We've grown a bit since the 1980s, and if we go out for Australian cuisine, it better be real Australian cuisine. Outdated style. Everyone knows it's called Outback Steakhouse for a reason, and author Josh Ozersky says that's a huge problem not just for Outback, but for any restaurant that stakes their reputation on, well, steak. Ozersky says that at one time, the steakhouse was one of the biggest, most quintessentially American places to go for a good meal. But recently, they've been left behind as the culinary landscape has changed. Steak served in such bulk quantities is rarely high-end stuff. The sides are almost always the bland, same old, and the meat is typically prepared using additives, MSG, and other sorts of tenderizers. At a time when people are more likely than ever before to cook their own food, they're also more likely to take the time to get a really nice piece of meat from the grocery store or the butcher. That's pushed steakhouses out, and Ozersky calls them, closer in spirit to strip clubs or spas, places to which people repair for rites of costly self-indulgence. Doesn't really sound like fun, does it? Local competition. One reason Outback Steakhouse is struggling is true of nearly all casual dining chains competition. But it's not just competition with other national chains that's hurting their business, there's also been a rise in independent restaurants trying to keep their doors open. These independent players also have an advantage over chains in that they can offer guests more unique experiences, and oftentimes that leads to better online reviews and more new diners stepping through the doors. Outback needs to compete with different restaurants on different levels, with unique experiences, one-of-a-kind specials, and local owners. And that's a tough thing to do, especially at a time when many people are trying to make a conscious decision to support more small businesses. So here is the chicken you'll be oh, enjoying yeah. tonight. You have this information. This is fantastic. Absolutely. Uh, his name was Colin. Here are his papers, okay? That's great. Racial insensitivities. The 500-plus different groups of Aboriginal people living in Australia are descendants of the continent's original inhabitants. According to Survival International, all those years of living in harmony with nature came to an end with 18th-century colonization, and that's caused serious conflict that still continues today. And that's why it was an incredibly bad idea to try to market the Bloomin' Onion as an Outback Aboriginal. Social media didn't take lightly to the term, saying it wasn't just in bad taste to make fun of Australia's indigenous people, but it was approaching outright racism. Outback was quick to apologize, saying they never intended to cause any harm. Even some of their less racist advertisements have been extremely insensitive, and that's the sort of thing social media doesn't forget. PR disasters and lawsuits 
Outback's troubles started as far back as 2009 when they paid out $19 million after female employees went to the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission with claims they had been denied advanced opportunities because of their gender. Then, in 2016, Outback found itself paying $3 million to settle a class action lawsuit brought over unpaid wages. The company had been asking employees to work an unpaid pre-shift period they called Outback time. Yikes. They've had a few major social media snafus, too. Like the firing of a server after her complaints about not getting a tip on a massive order from Christ Fellowship. The church reached out to make things right, but Outback's handling of the situation didn't go over well with anyone. Then, when a uniformed, on-duty Tennessee Wildlife Resource Agency officer was asked to leave because he wouldn't put his service weapon in his car, you can imagine how well that went over with the public.